All right, good afternoon everyone and welcome again for Vardin webinar. Uh, today our topic is OSGI, uh, component, dynamic component model, which is pretty popular with Vardin. And here, together with me, I have the, one of the pioneers of OSGI and Vardin, Florian. Uh, yeah, my, hi, my name is Florian, I'm from Austria got a company, it's called Lunifera GmbH and um, came here to Vardin to meet people and yeah, to give a webinar about OSGI. So you have been using OSGI yeah, for a long years. Long time. Yeah, yeah, I'm using OSGI for six or seven years now and started to combine Vardin and OSGI about five years ago. Oh, I yeah. think yeah. Or four years ago, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah, interesting fact of the day that the OSGI Alliance was founded in the same year that Vardin <laughs> was founded, so <laughs> we are pretty much aligned on that side. Yeah. But yes, please, you have prepared some slides for... Yeah. So, hello, uh, my name is Florian again. Uh, if you have any questions about the webinar, don't hesitate, just uh, tweet me under at pflow. Uh, my company is called lonifera.com. Uh, we'd like to, we try to write as much as possible software based on open source licenses like the Apache license, the Eclipse public license. And I'm also involved in the open standard business platform, the OSPP. We had a, um, a webinar yesterday and it's uh, already online. Um, at this point, I, I can remind you that if you have any questions there uh, during the webinar, there is a forum thread at vaden.com. Please go and put your questions there. I will be following those. Well, I am often get it uh, asked, uh, what is it? What is OSGI? And it's really simple to answer. It's a modularity layer for Java. I'm pretty sure you have the same idea like 15 seconds before. So I'm going to start my webinar today with a really uh, simple um, OSGI application. So I've prepared an Eclipse installation. You can see it down here. Um, you just can see the console. All the code is, is, is hidden and up there, there's an Avalian application. At first, I'm going to start. There was Chai container. It takes some seconds. Now you can see um, the Avalian framework is installed properly using push. And we have a session expiring. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, here in the upper part we have the application and, and the lower part here is the console. Yeah, it's, okay. the, it's the IDE. Okay. It's, a, it's an Eclipse IDE and I started it for yeah. it. Okay. In the upper part you can see uh, a main application yeah. and two tabs. Okay. Yeah. And what, what I did, I used OSGI to um, assemble that application based on four bundles and to get it modularity uh, to mm. demonstrate the life cycle involved in OSGI. Right. So at first I'm going to show you the, the involved bundles in the IDE. Okay, so you, you're now controlling the OSGI runtime. Runtime, exactly. There. Yeah. yeah. So That's you can OSGI list, the, runtime. list, the, list all, all the all the bundles. All the bundles. All which the are bundles in, in there. Yeah. Okay. I filled that for all Lunifera okay. bundles. So you have three. Yeah. Three were. Yeah. I have three bundles. Uh, the upper bundle is the main area around it. Yes. Yeah. And we have two additional bundles, um, the content provider and the another content bundle. And these are, um, how should I say, these are providing the tabs for the main, okay. For okay. The main application. Yeah. So and now we can deal with something called lifecycle. We will hear about it uh, later. Uh, so what happens if I'm going to stop a bundle? Let's do so. I'm stopping the first bundle, the content provider bundle. It, that's the bundle ID 13. And if I stop it, you'll see uh, the tab in the, in, the, in the main application uh, mm. disappeared. This doesn't mean that, 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 that I, I, I called uh, tab set visible false. No, yeah, um, the, whole, the whole classes had been removed. Uh, yeah. The whole logic has actually the, the, been the whole, removed. The whole logic it. had been removed. Okay. Yeah? It had been uh, loaded classes had been removed from the OSGI container. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty different to standard yeah, editions. So, so. And I also may start it again. I say start 13 and um, it appears again yeah, up there. The same. Yeah. Okay. So this is pretty cool. It's so a really nice way to, to, to 
install updates in a running system. So yeah, you can version those separately and you yeah. can have different yeah. versions yeah. And, and update your functionality yeah. and then deploy it exactly. runtime without no downtime basically. Yep, yeah. I got the running with GI system and I, I'd like to update. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some kind it makes of sense functionality. In the applications too. Yeah. Can, it totally can have... makes sense. So you can reduce your downtime drastically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think we so should continue. Yeah. With the so that's yeah. Please. Yeah. So this, this is always GI live. This uh, this is always this is always GI live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, um, I often get asked, uh, what is it? What is always GI? And um, it takes a few sentences to explain what OSGI is about, but it's really simple to uh, show you what OSGI is not. OSGI is not a monolithic system. Earlier, yeah. um, 10 years, 15 years ago, applications had been built and they became uh, like a monolithic applications. Mm. You couldn't mm. divide them anymore. You had to ship all the systems, but you couldn't ship yeah, parts yeah, you of have them. To deploy and run them. Like yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, OSGI is, is really different. Uh, OSGI behaves like neurons. Mm -hmm. um, there are atomic parts. These atomic parts are mm -hmm. called bundles. Mm -hmm. And different bundles may um, have relations to, to, to other bundles. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. And there are, there are different ways. You can use the default dependency management way or the OSGI service so, way. So this is really is something like Maven, but yeah, runtime. It's, it's a little bit like Maven, <laughs> runtime, <laughs> okay. but just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So we shouldn't we shouldn't say OSGI is very close to Maven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 but dependency but yeah, management. Yeah, but yeah, um, you're yeah. you're doing that live on on runtime environment. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So um, yeah, OSGI um, defines modules. Let's call a module a bundle. Yeah, and mm. OSGI allows you to define the dependencies between all the bundles. In that case, module A uses module C, and module A also uses module B, mm. and so on. So, so, so every time you know which component requires different bundles, different modules. Yeah. Um, a bundle is an atomic element about uh, OSGI. It consists mm. of code, metadata, and resources. Um, it's, it's, it's nothing more but a, but a, um, yeah, a char file with an extended uh, manifest MF. Yeah, yeah, you right. have to put in your bundle symbolic name, your bundle version, and so on. Mm. And then suddenly it's a, it's a bundle See. and you can run it in your OSGI application. Um, there's a really important aspect about OSGI. It's the life cycle. Yeah. Yeah, we could see it before. Yeah, yeah so you can, you can stop and start. Yeah, we can them. install, uninstall, start, stop bundles yes. at, at, at lifetime. Yeah. yeah and that, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool for, for a lot of applications. Um, here we can see the life cycle and the different states and the different um, ways how states may, may, may evolve. Yeah, so this is one bundle life cycle. Yeah. So it can see installed to the server, resolved. Yeah. Starting, active, stopping, uninstalled. Exactly. So basically, that's the whole cycle. Yeah, you can install it, you can start it, you can un uninstall it, uh, you can mm. deal with different versions. Yeah, okay. Yeah. State machine. State machine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, OSGI takes care you only uh, bundles that, that, that uh, will that get all their required references, mm. their required dependencies will be resolved. Otherwise, uh, OSGI will reject the bundle yeah. Yeah, and say no. So, so what about what in Vardin perspective, is Vardin one dependency, one bundle yeah. itself? Yes. Vardin con consists uh, about five bundles, I think. Yeah. Okay. Seven, three, yeah. three, or six bundles, yeah, something I think, like I that. Think so yeah, so yeah. it's split, but, uh, yeah. but uh, logically one. one uh, e uh, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. Uh, let's call it feature. It's one feature. Yeah, one feature. Yeah. 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 And as a developer, for sure you can you can deal with the life cycle. It's mm. called an activator, a bundle activator. It's an interface provided by by the OSGI yeah. um, um, and foundation. And yeah, you can you can get information about starting, about stopping the bundle, uh, just implementing the, the the bundle activator. 
So basically you could build an application to start those panels. So your, yeah. your Vardin application could start uh, those panels. Maybe. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, yeah. So. Vardin means uh, at some time you need to register your servlet somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. it's a good place to do it uh, in an activator. When a bundle becomes started, you may register your yeah. Yeah. Your, your Vardin servlet somewhere. Uh, you never should miss to register your activator in the manifest MF. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise so you won't get any um, um, life cycle notifications about it. Right, right. Yeah. So the um, starting point. That's the that's the main interface to deal with uh, with um, OSGI with the OSGI framework. It's the bundle context. Each bundle has its own context, and you can see there are pretty much um, um, pretty methods yeah. in it. You can add different kind of listeners for the framework. Um, you can get bundles by bundle ID, by the bundle yeah. symbolic name. You can install bundles, you can uninstall them, register services and so on. Uh, we won't go into too much depth yeah. Yeah, yeah. in that case, but, okay. but we'll hear about yeah. most of the features later. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Um, Another way to deal with, with, with life cycle of bundles is a bundle listener. Mm. Yeah. So this could be outside the same bundle. Yeah, this could be outside yeah. the same bundle. Here you can see in the start method, uh, we are using our bundle context related with the, our um, own bundle. And we are just listening the bundle context. And in the implemented method below, bundle changed, we are getting uh, uh, life cycle events. Yeah, okay. yeah. so we callbacks. can deal with yeah, callbacks. So we can, we can deal with it. Um, here, that's a really popular um, um, pattern. The uh, bundle on the right side, the tutorial services, um, mm -hmm. will notify the OSGI runtime about um, its life cycle. And the so tutorial any, any of those may, states, basically. Yeah, any of those states. Yeah, yeah. you can filter them, but, but basically all yeah. of them okay. states. Yeah. And the tutorial UI may react for it. Yeah, for yeah. example, show a new UI based on what, what just came if available. For, for, for example, yeah. yeah. But the but yeah, example I showed previously uh, is implemented more, more flexible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it doesn't use that pattern. So uh, another really important thing about um, OSGI is dependencies. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We need to de Sorry. deal with dependencies. Uh, let's say we have a bundle, let's call it A, and the bundle may export packages and it may import packages. Yeah. Right. A package is a, is a Java package contained inside of the bundle. And if, uh, for instance, bundle B needs to load classes from the bundle, mm -hmm. um, it only can see exported packages. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's very so. important to know every package you export, um, see it as, as API. I see. Yeah. 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 Uh, can you export part of the package or is it only no, on it all, it's, all it's, the it's totally package. Okay. Yeah. So you're exporting all the package and um, yeah. Yeah. Think about be. it as, as yeah, yeah, when you're be very the, careful with yeah. exporting packages. Yeah. And a bundle who would like to use classes inside uh, that package needs to uh, import the package on the other side. Yeah. Right. Or there's a way require bundle we we'll see in a few slides. Right. So this is similar to import statements in Java code. Yeah, but this yeah, is in yeah, the manifest yeah. file now. Yeah, that's in manifest yeah. file. It's, 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 it's similar to it. Um, here we can see the dependencies yeah. Yeah, that, are, that are pretty, pretty fine, uh, very close to the dependency we saw, saw earlier. And here we got uh, an exception, never do, never create a cyclic dependencies. Yeah, okay. yeah, they won't work. Yeah, Bundle A requires bundle B, B, C, C, A. You probably see an error. Yeah, you try yeah, to do yeah. This, you yeah. see an error yeah. already in the IDE. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It, it it doesn't work. So now we come to the to the to a very heavy way to um, import packages, and it's called the require bundle. Okay. Uh, manifest header yeah. directive. Um, so we can see two bundles: uh, the tutorial UI bundle on the left side. Uh -huh. Requires the panel tutorial UI service. Yeah, so yeah, and it's manifest. So um, tutorial UI may call a new say hello service since uh, the tutorial service on the right side has an implementation of the say hello right, service. Right. Yeah. So, so but um, if there is a second bundle, let's yeah. call it XXYYZZ services, and it contains the same class. 
okay? Yeah. You never ever will be able yeah, to load that class from your Oglomifero tutorial mm -hmm. UI bundle. Mm -hmm. yeah? you, you, you exactly say, I require that bundle. Right. Yeah? right. So, so, so there so is al almost, almost no way. Let's, 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 let's. Ah, okay, <laughs> so almost there are no tricks way. to do that. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there are tricks. But. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, and, and, and the, the, the very light way of importing uh, packages is the import package directive. Yeah. In that special case, we are importing um, just the package my services. Yeah. And in that uh, special case, um, the, bundle, the class could also become loaded from a different bundle. From, yeah. yeah. You can you can handle that by versions. We, we, we talk about versions in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, be also really careful with require bundle. Yeah? For instance, org SLF4J, uh, never ever uh, require bundle org SLF4J, import the package. Mm. So you can use different uh, log provider, yeah. log yeah. bundles yeah. like uh, logback. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If a require Makes bundle, sense, yeah. you pin it to org SLF4J. Okay, so yeah. you're, you're hard coding it. Yeah, yeah. Basically. <clears throat> oh, and we are there. We are there at, 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 at our versions. Yeah. Yeah. Versioning is also very important in OSGI applications um, and you have to be careful with it. You have to deal exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like Maven. Yeah, so yeah. you have to have some kind of numbering, version numbering yeah. for the bundles. Yeah. Is, there, is it standardized somehow or yeah. can you do Yeah, you have major, minor... Uh, and, and build version probably. Yeah, and then a qualifier. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so version, uh, let's assume we have the same bundle, the bundle A, mm. we are box exporting packages and uh, it also may import packages. <coughs> to export a package, you just put the, the version uh, behind the package, yeah, so for instance 129, and to require a bundle, you may uh, specify uh, version ranges. Right, so yeah. you don't have to specify one, but exactly, right, right, but exactly. It can be many. And it's really good practice, and yeah. uh, uh, maybe you should try to, to use this: is to define an upper uh, excluded version. That special way require bundle or um, Glunifero tutorial version um, included as a from two four three two three zero zero excluded. Okay. Yeah. So if the major version um, um, changes. changes you may expect API changes. Right, right. Yeah. so there is special syntax for this, apparently. Yeah, so there's special syntax. The, the square bracket mean it's included. Okay. And, and uh, the, the round normal. bracket, yeah, the normal bracket. Uh, parenthesis. Uh, yeah. Parenthesis mean um, excluded. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, what about if you're just allowing everyone, it, you, can, you can probably specify it that way also, or does it have to be interval? Of two versions. No, 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 no. Uh, if you if you if you just uh, specify two four three without an, an interval, yeah. then it means at least. Two, okay, four, so three. it's a minimum version. Yeah, it's a okay. minimum version. Okay, you have to use at least a two four three, uh, and it's pretty much the same for the import package. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's assume we have. Um, we have we have a bundle Oglonifera tutorial UI, and it like it, it it wants to create an instance about the say hello service. Yeah, yeah, and it imports the package my services. The say hello service is located in in, in, in a Java package called my services. Yeah, and it likes to import the version one two zero. Yes. Yeah, and there are two different. Um, Versions available. Two different implementations. Oh, two implement, different yeah. exported exported uh, packages available. Yep. Um, the upper uh, exports the package uh, version one zero zero. Yeah. And the second uh, one three zero. So OSGI will ensure um, that um, the, the, the 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 proper bundle is wired. Right. Right. Yeah. In OSGI, okay. it's called wired. It's 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 a wiring. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But is this typical that uh, um, there are multiple implementations of the same, like this, uh, different versions of the. Uh, yeah, it sometimes uh, happens yeah. with with external, uh, external applications. Applica yeah, okay. but it also may uh, happen in your own application if you would like to uh, to update 
some parts of the mm. software on the fly. Right. You have right. to install a new version. Yeah. And then yeah, you have to they remove are available the, at the same yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to remove um, the bundles. So a big difference between mm. um, with GI and the standard edition means mm. you can have multiple versions mm. of the same bundle in your OSGI container. Right. Yeah. But you have to be careful. Yeah. There are there are special cases if two bundles are in the same class space. Mm. I call it class space. Uh, you, you 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 get problems. Yeah. Okay. Uses so conflict. would 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 a practical solution be that don't do this? So just remove the previous bundle. No, no, bundle, no, no, but, no. It's but fine. This is okay. You, you you can do it. For instance, yeah. locking often um, for for for. Yeah, often you have different versions of yeah. login plugins yes. in there, and mostly it works yeah, properly. Okay. Yeah, okay. but there are few use cases. So if you get a, a, a uses conflict, bundle uses conflict, um, ask um, ask Google. There's mm. a really good uh, blog about it from uh, Neil Bartlett, I think. Yeah. Okay. Neil Bartlett. Yeah. Um, so let's look about the the standard edition. Yep. Yeah, here we got a general class pass. All the char files are located in the class pass, but you mostly do not know which one will be loaded. Yeah, yeah. once I had sure. had the problem before I used OSGI and I needed two char files in different versions on the same class pass, and we had to deal with class loaders, and it took yeah, really yeah, long yeah, time so to find out what what it's actually loading there. Yeah, yeah. Is it actually trying to load something there, or is it just failing if if it's Having a conflict there uh, in OSGI. Yeah. So if you're using the general class path, there. No, there is no general class okay. path. Yeah. Yeah. We see in the next slide. Okay. Also that, that that's the general class path in uh, um, in the standard edition. Okay. Okay. Yeah? And OSGI goes a different way. There is no general class path anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. For obvious reasons. That was that was too fast. There is no, there is no general class pass. Okay. Um, OSGI comes with a class uh, mm. loader per bundle, mm. yeah, and the class loader knows about all the relations. Mm. Yeah, and in this special case, it tries to delegate loading the class to the next bundle, to the next bundle, and looks what is imported, what is exported, where to resolve, where can I find it. Yeah. So, okay. so there is no general class pass anymore. So, so basically the. The tip you were giving me yesterday that uh, you don't use class yeah. for name is yeah. related to this one, so there is no yeah. Yeah. standard yeah. way of class for name yeah. will 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 uh, yeah it's a common pattern in the standard edition yeah, yeah using class for name and you f you find it somewhere yeah right yeah. right but in OSGI you uh, y you it's most probably you won't find it always yeah. okay so, so do note it's, it's yeah. It might be something that is found, but uh, yeah. but it's not yeah. the correct one. No. Yeah. If you if you know where it is located, what you are doing, you may use the class for name uh, passing the class loader. Yeah. That okay. would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But um, um, using class for name string is very bad. It pins the class. Yeah. Yeah. Inside the the GVM. Yeah. Okay. And OSGI cannot unload any, it anymore. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so do not use class for name. Try try to use services. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. One. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now let's talk about services. OSGI services. Um, they're really great. You can um, um, do almost uh, everything with mm. it. OSGI services. Um, in, the, in the in the first step, we are talking about. Uh, using them manually, and mm -hmm. afterwards we will see the dependency injection mechanism yeah, okay. of, of OSGI. It's called the declarative service specification. Yeah. yeah, OSGI services are defined in the core specification, and the declarative service specification is defined in the compendium specification. Okay. So there are in OSGI there are two specifications: yeah, the oh, core okay. thing and the the the, the yeah. extended, extended things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, here you can see um, a synapse 
and let's assume um, the upper part says, okay, I, I require an interface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can say uh, I, 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 I need it's mandatory, it's optional. I need at least one, uh, or uh, I need at least zero. Okay. Yeah, you can you can define this, and there is um, an implementation that provides that service. Yeah. Then OSGI will ensure that the provided service and the required service will find together. Right. Yeah. Okay. If you if you if you ask OSGI, oh, is there a service mm -hmm. for 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 an interface or for a class? Yeah. Um, you most probably mm -hmm. will get one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If it is there. Yeah. And the version is 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 fine. So, OSGI services. Um, it's pretty much about providing something and requiring something. Yeah. Um, you can yeah. deal with classes or with interfaces. Uh, uh, I prefer going by interfaces. And the bundle may provide an interface, mm -hmm. an, an implementation yeah. for an interface. Yeah. And a different bundle may require an implementation for a given interface. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This sounds pretty clear. So it's yeah. a good Java pattern anyway to yeah. have those implementations yeah. and interfaces separately. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So in that special case, uh, bundle A could provide a service, I my service, and bundle B could consume that service mm. or an implementation about it. So um, how could it look in 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 a, in a real application? Mm. Yeah, let's assume we have a, a bundle. We we exported all the API mm. into that bundle. It doesn't contain uh, any implementations, just uh, interfaces. Yeah. Yeah. And so it may export all the packages right. in it. Right. Yeah. right, right. And we have a consumer. The consumer likes uh, or needs to use um, an implementation for the interface. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So and it may ask the service registry. So for now, right. we do not talk about uh, declarative services. So there is no dependency injection right yeah. now. Okay. You have to, to, to code it manually. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the consumer would, would like to consume the service. And if there is a provider or different provider, OSGI will ensure that you get um, an implementation for the bundle. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. So. You, can, you can deal with, if there are different providers providing uh, the same service, you can de deal with the order. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is pretty much the same as CDI on Java IE works, like an inversion yeah. of control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's an inversion of control, yeah. 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 It's also called the white whiteboard pattern. Yeah. Yeah. You just put something into the registry, and everybody who who needs to use it yeah. can can access it. Yeah. Yeah. So you also can um, um, deal with the life cycle of OSGI services. Yeah. We could see the service listener, um, the bundle listener. Before you you can do the same with the service listener. You're using the bundle context register. Uh, your service listener and you get information about it. But uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't use the service listener, mm. yeah, um, mm. since the service listener only notifies you about changes. If there are bundle uh, services already started, mm. you won't get information about okay. it. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, here it's pretty much the same pattern as we could see in, by, by notifying, uh, observing the life cycle of bundles. Yeah. Here we are observing life cycle of services. It's 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 a the similar same. pattern. Yeah. yeah, it's a similar pattern. So, <clears throat> if you would like to get an instance about a service, use the service tracker. The service tracker also deals with bundles that had uh, with services that had already been started. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then so. we'll we'll call the method adding service for um, any bun uh, any service available right now. Okay. Yeah. So that's 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 okay. a really really good way, and a service tracker is uh, often used. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And but the pattern is the same. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, change sorry. anything. So it's a utility. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, that that that. But the service tracker is part of the OSGI. Yeah. Specification. Yeah. It's part. Of, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's not. OSGI uh, ships with with the service tracker. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to import and bundle. I think it's called org OSGI framework util tracker or okay. tracker yeah. directly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and here you can see um, the say hello service and with a, with a big red eye in front. So 
I would just say, suggest use services, uh, use interfaces, yeah? try to avoid uh, registering uh, yeah. any classes, classes by their yeah. class name, okay. uh, by, by their implementation name. Yeah, that yeah. sounds yeah, that sounds a good practice. Anyway, yeah, so. that could be done. Yeah. yeah, you need one bundle more. Yeah, yeah, basically. you have the API bundle. Yeah, yeah, but that's it. So now we come to the interesting part. That's yeah. uh, declarative services. Now we're going into <coughs> dependency injection. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. In OSGI. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much the same as we did before. There is a there is a consumer that likes to consume a service. Yeah. And there is one or more provider who would like to to to, to get an instance about a service. Yeah. And now you may use um, a declarative service description. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this it's is actually more like the CDI yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. <coughs> there, um, the service description, uh, how are they call it? Uh, service components. Yeah. Okay. Service component description um, is based on XML. Okay. Yeah. Here in that special case, you, we are defining, okay, there's an implementation class component uh, and it requires the IMI service. Right. right. Uh, yeah. Where should this go? Where, where should this XML be in, in your source tree? Ah, yeah. yeah. So I'm any, anywhere in the source tree? Uh, yeah, there is a special folder. It's called the OSGI in folder. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I have a slide for it. Okay, yeah, good. I have a slide for it. Um, in this special case, we do not provide any services. There's just a component. It starts up automatically, and oh. uh, the IMI service will be injected if available. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can see cardinality uh, um, optional. Yeah. So yeah. the component will start up. Nevertheless, the the, the service is available. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we would define cardinality one, one or mandatory, mm -hmm. then the component wouldn't come up if okay. there is no implementation for yeah. it. Yeah. Here we can see the same for the provided services. The special case we are providing the my other service uh, implementation class uh, by the interface IMI service. Yeah. Yeah. There are also annotations for it. Okay. Yeah. So but no cool. runtime, no, um, yeah, the runtime is not aware about annotations. Okay. So yeah, so you need to uh, install some tools into your IDE, um, or you use M2E, yeah. maybe to Eclipse, yeah. to um, create an XML on the fly. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So you still have to yeah. underneath yeah. it. Yeah. You need you need yeah. you, you need them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And here you can see um, yeah, the structure. Um, you can put it in any folder, okay, but, it's, but okay. it's good practice to put it to OSGI oh, in. Okay. And never forget to register the service component in your uh, manifest MF. Right, right. Yeah, you'll debug and search for hours to find it. Right. Yeah. So okay. if a service doesn't come up, check. look at your manifest. Yeah, MF. check the manifest. Yeah, check the manifest. <laughs> So there are two patterns. It's called uh, one of them is called uh, the whiteboard pattern. Mm -hmm. um, it's about uh, anybody needs an needs an implementation for an interface. Um, he yeah. doesn't have to be aware who provides the interface. Right. He just needs to to use a service tracker or declarative services. Right. Right. And as soon as the service is available, yeah, uh, the 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 consumer will get an instance about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It also works properly with, with distributed systems, remote service, remote service admin. Yeah. Oh, okay. so, so, so you may have a, 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 a consumer in Finland and the yeah. provider in Austria. <laughs> yeah. If a provider in Austria provides, you will get an, 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 an instance, instance about instance it. it. Yeah. <laughs> but it, that's, our, that's our enhanced uh, okay. topics. So if it. it is something for OSGI from Austria, we can get it into Finland as yeah. an instance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And there is an extender pattern. Extender pattern yeah. means um, that, oh, parts of them are German. <laughs> yeah. No, no problem. <laughs> there is a, there is an, uh, the extender pattern means that you're registering a bundle listener yeah. and you can look at a manifest MF file, yeah. uh, whether there are additional manifest headers and if our header Headers there, you know. Okay, uh, you have to read the 
the bundles somehow. Yeah. yeah. You know, for instance, um, your your volume widget set is in mm. there. Right. Yeah. Right. You could That's you could do it by the, by extender pattern. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess the body widget that is a special case anyway in, in, yeah. in, in this context because yeah. it's a monolithic one and we are trying to get away from the monolithic world yeah. altogether and, yeah. and that's the one thing that but still I, is... But I, but, but I never had problems uh, with the monolithic widget sets. Okay, so, now in, so it's a usually a static resource on, on runtime anyway. So, yeah, yeah. Now, usually you decide your add-ons yeah. at development time yeah. Then, then you run your Maven Tiger builds, you get your repositories, your bundle repositories. And yeah, it, it at runtime there's no need to add to add yeah, new, yeah, yeah. You, you add ons on the yeah. fly. Yeah, so it basically means that your widget set is compiled beforehand during the yeah. development yeah. time and yeah. it's already there. Yeah. And it supports all the all the add-ons you are using yeah. using for exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. The only limitation is there is of course that you can uh, on the fly, without changing the widgets, that you can't introduce new components. Still, yeah. but maybe we can we can solve yeah, these yeah. things a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> but I never had problems with it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Never, I think in a normal case, never, it's, uh, never had used to do. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, I think that that the picture is uh, <laughs> is I, I use it for some years now, and it's the the, the marriage about Vardin and 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 OSGI. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I I have to use it today. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so if 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 you, you would like to use um, Vadin uh, at um, in your OSGI environment, mm -hmm. that's pretty simple. <clears throat> and the key is uh, an OSGI service. It's called the HTTP service. Right. Yeah. yeah. You need the HTTP service to register your Vardin servlet. Yeah. yeah. You're doing okay. you, you're doing all the, the the stuff exactly the same way. The, the same way than you do without OSGI. Yeah. Uh, but you're implementing a service tracker, for instance. Yeah. You're waiting for the HTTP service, and as yeah. soon as it pops up, yeah. you instantiate your uh, Vardin servlet and register it at the HTTP okay. service. Okay. Yeah, here we can see it. Uh, let's go from uh, from town to up. We have a my Vadin UI extends UI. There's nothing yeah, special so, so in it. Yeah, we have a no my Vadin servlet. Okay. Yeah, that's, it, it, no, that's standard. Yeah, yeah. It may also be an an, an internal class, okay. an static internal class, and. Um, so the first line shows you I, I, I got an instance about the HTTP service, for instance, in my, in my activator. Yeah. And then I'm registering my Vardin servlet, a new instance about it. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so that's, that's, about that's, it. that's, that's um, and then for instance, Chetty will hook up the servlet, register it as, uh, mm -hmm. as in, in, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the proper servlet context. And uh, yeah, things, so things, works. things work properly. Um, but there's one, one thing we have to we have to notice. Yeah. Yeah. You resources. need yeah resources. You need to be aware where your resources are located. Right. Yeah. Um, and therefore, let's go one slide back. Yeah. You can see uh, in the first line there's something called a default context. Yeah. That's, that's called the HTTP context, and it is run responsible at uh, the 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 Chetty server or the the enhanced classes of, of Equinox uh, servlet will uh, ask the default context about resources. Okay. Yeah, and the default context has to return them. In that special yep. case, uh, you may use something called, as uh, so you may the, the extender pattern. Yeah? yeah, you have to create a class. It's your resource provider class, and if a bundle becomes started, yeah. you, you look at the name. Yeah. I did it yeah. often. I, I looked at oh, oh, is it called Combadin? And everything that was Combadin uh, yeah. was put into into my resource provider. Right. And if a request request for an URL arrives, uh, I delegate them to each bundle. Yeah. And hopefully, I get them. Get, yeah, get, get a the result. response. <laughs> yeah. Response out of there. Get, yeah, so get results, yeah. but it may be null. Yeah. 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 That was the the the. the the, the big thing about integrating OSGI and Vadin. Yeah. And it's pretty easy and there are there are some examples 
Yeah. And we um, talk to each other. We will. We will. Um, yeah. So I think we will take this a little bit further in the future and make make yeah. them make them easier to try it out in your own project. How to how to run? Yeah. Run or, run run Vadino with yeah, China's three seconds. China environment. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you if you have are interested in all that stuff, just um, look at look at GitHub. Yeah, yeah. I think it, there I think are also also advanced examples in it. We've implemented the GPA container based on the uh, GPA specification. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's pretty much the same example like Vadim ships. Yeah. Okay. But with an with, For an, your with, with an OSGI approach. Fresh approach. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, should we take some questions at this point? So there has been quite a few questions beforehand already. Uh, but okay, Matti, Matti here on the forum is uh, looking for tips for for add-on developers. So what in add-ons? Yeah. Uh, how should they be treated in in OSGI environment? Um, is there something special the author has to do for the for the add-on to be packaged the right way, or do they just work out of the box? You mentioned Tyco a couple of yeah. times, so you're yeah. building. Yeah, Tyco. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you would like to uh, use, it it would be great, great if if, if every vendor of a, of an add-on would put in the the, the, manifest. the, the the manifest stuff for being a bundle. Yeah. But um, it's 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 quite easy to to migrate them. Um, from uh, a default char file to a uh, to a bundle, we are mm. using the um, Apache bundle plugin for it. The Apache Maven bundle plugin. Right. right. Yeah. Mm. You have to you have to to to, to, to create a Maven module. Mm. You put in all the information in the POM XML and 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 it's done. Okay. It's also available at the GitHub, um, but it's called GitHub.com/lunifera lunifera minus dependencies. Uh, you'll okay. find you'll find a lot of examples there. Yeah, how to do it. that? Yeah. yeah. Um, then again, what about the add-on author? So is the manifest the only thing they basically need to add there to make it compatible with the environment? So if if there would be a manifest already in the in the yeah yeah. So that would be yeah all yeah that um, would be all except yeah. there are there are. Yeah, and, and don't use the class for name in any way <laughs> where in your yeah, add-on code. Try to try to avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, uh, what about if I, if an add-on wants to um, provide a service or interface? M would it make sense to have a separate bundles for those like you you said there? There's the API bundle and the implementation bundle. Would it make sense in a, in a single what in add-on to do that? Uh, mm, no, it, uh, yeah, it's a good question. I say I think it depends. Yeah, it depends. If um, if there is a common use case where um, different vendors could provide right. implementations for it, yeah, then it it would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. but if, yeah. if if there's ju just one use case, yeah, yeah then, there, then there is no need to create yeah, an API so that's bundle. An overhead over yeah. It. yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, there is a question about LifeRay, LifeRay Seven, and uh, and uh, portlets develop with OSGI. I don't know if you know too much about LifeRay, but no, uh, I never, I never, I never. Yeah, never, never so I think it. this is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty new news. But uh, LifeRay Seven, the next version of LifeRay, will actually be uh, OSGI. Uh, container and OSTI architecture and uh, yes so uh, we are working together with those guys to make it easy to use part in there as uh, as a way to build portlets for for the OSTI environment uh, I think technically it's the same thing you you are doing here so yeah, there is exactly. no difference yeah from that perspective, it's just that the runtime environment is provided by LifeRay, LifeRay there. Uh, and then there is new questions coming in. So, uh, Spring Vardin web application without bundling the Equinox servlet. Uh, 
So is it possible to run OSGI in standard Spring world in a web application? Yeah, um, there is. Uh, what about without, I, I do not understand without, without the bundling the Equinox servlet. So basically, uh, for instance, Equinox servlet is already a bundle. It's it's there. It's Equinox servlet and e e Equinox HTTP are uh, involved. Okay. Maybe you're talking about he's he's, he's talking about the the Jetty Nine. Yeah, I'm, Mark, I'm, Martin, Martin if you're still following, but if you can yeah. explain a little bit more, but yeah, um, no, but, uh, but but I can talk about Spring, Spring, and, yeah. yeah, Spring and OSGI. Yeah. <coughs> um, um, yeah, well, that, that there's something called the Blueprint specification, and it's um, Spring for OSGI. <coughs> I would decide to use declarative services. I had a customer project, and we mm. migrated from from Spring to declarative services. It's it's, okay. it's much more easier. To okay. maintain the whole system. Okay, it's yeah. a reliable yeah. way. Yeah, there's a, the declarative services are really have, have a deep integration mm. in, in OSGI. Mm. And I'm not sure about it, yeah, but it seems for me with Blueprint, uh, it was a it's try a to combine two worlds. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. It is, it is but, not easy to handle. Yeah, but is it still a work in progress or um, so it might get better at some day or? I'm not uh, sure. Okay. I, I, yeah. I didn't. Uh, so we, we we invested a lot of time in 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 Blueprint and OSGI, but but we decided to use yeah, the okay. okay. But there is a Virgo server. It's from the Eclipse Foundation, and it works pretty good okay. on Spring. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's take more questions here. So um, so there is. Saifed in Turkey asking about uh, Vardin 6 application ported to Vardin 7 and deploying on JBoss application server and having problems with that setup. Any, any pointers? I, I, I remember hearing that the JBoss is something that... Uh, yeah, the, the, the uh, new um, uh, JBoss... Uh, the, the first idea was that the new JBoss Wildfly server yeah. will be will be based on OSGI. Yeah. Uh, JBoss worked on OSGI integration, but they removed it uh, from from the server. And now you can install it as an additional module. Right, right. In there, right. so the, the the core of Wildfly isn't based on OSGI, OSGI. anymore. Okay. Um, so yeah, also. But I, okay, if you take it one piece at a time, so yeah. JBoss application server might be something that you might be good to try something else just to test it out yeah yeah and yeah. Uh, but what about Vardin 6 and Vardin 7 was there yeah uh, there, there had been differences okay yeah to migrate I think the best way is to look into into the examples there okay uh, yeah okay uh, or send me send me a tweet or send me an email yeah you'll get my 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 email address from 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 the company yeah website yeah um, all right, let's go forward. There's Mac and Guido asking about Apache Caraf. So Apache yeah. Caraf is yeah. the one runtime yeah. environment yeah. for OSGI. Yeah, no, it it it, it 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 enhances different runtime environments. So okay. you can run Caraf based on uh, Felix, for instance, okay. based on Equinox. And there are pretty much questions about Caraf in the last time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so I got got an idea about Caraf, but I think I should really dive deep into into it for now. Um, yeah, the web application bundle specification. So VAB. So this is yeah. new thing to me at least. But um, web. web application bundle. So yeah. It's, uh, yeah. 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 It's 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 a mix mixture about bundle. And, yeah. and war file. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You may deploy it like a war file into an OSGI environment, yeah. and then it treats somehow like a bundle. Right. Right. Yeah. Would it be easier to do the resources mapping with with this kind of architecture, or, uh, or it try to solve something like that? So. I never uh, used web application okay. bundles. I okay. really prefer the the, the go, 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 yeah <laughs> going the car way. Uh, the, the I know the car is really is yeah. really excellent. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, now about Caraf and web applications, mm -hmm. it should run, um, but it should run out of the box. Uh, you should install it, and it, it should work. You may also uh, put 
war files into mm. into Karaf mm. and then make some magic and then yeah 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 and um, actually I have an impression that our internal OSGI tests are based on Karaf, yeah, yeah, Karaf exactly. setup yeah. so we can uh, ask ask from the R and D guys so mm -hmm. yeah so how how they are using it. Um, Mm, let's see. Latest one in 7.3.3. There is a problem with atmosphere framework in OSGI container. Um, have you yeah, encountered it? Yeah, we, ha we have been running 7.3.2. We created a patch that, that there had been a problem with version, versions of uh, our JSON, I think. Yeah, okay. We, we could run it. And yes, there are, there is an exception about annotations if you start the the Atmosphere. the, 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 the OSGI container. Okay. It tells you somehow annotations couldn't be resolved, resolved or found, but but I didn't figure out why since we had no problems. Yeah, okay, so it's still working. Properly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the basic situation: if you get this error, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah. So uh, so basically, that's a third-party library included in. In, in the Vardin setup, so so, but that that should that should be pretty much tested in uh, in our environment already. Um, let's see, what's the next question? Uh, uh, Sai is asking about installing and deploying Maven project into PC or mobile using OSGI. And uh, about external char dependencies in the bundle, so I think we covered this pretty much there. So, so the dependencies, how they work, work in the, in the OSGI. It's all about the dependency management, basically. Yeah. So, but, but I saw that he asked about any uh, external uh, chars. external char files. Yeah. So these are probably char files that doesn't have any. Yeah, yeah. I would I would bundle. use the Maven bundle plugin. Uh, just follow the the Lunifera GitHub slash Lunifera slash dependency or Lunifera minus yeah. dependencies. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, they, we, we, we are, uh, I call it OSGI fine a lot of char files there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then there is Conrad asking about the uh, recommendation for distributed OSGI environment. So uh, how to, how to run what in there? <coughs> so if you, if you would like to create distributed OSGI, yeah. uh, um, environments you should use the I forgot its name the RS specification remote services specific right, specification right. or the remote services um, admin specification okay so it will ensure that that services are um, um, injected even if you are working from different places but maybe he asks about the the yeah, maybe this is more like on a web web application yeah. level. So yeah. if you balance the application yeah. in two different yeah. containers, yeah, um, uh, Jetty can do so. Yeah, yeah. You so it's it's uh, you need some kind of front proxy there to balance the network traffic, but yeah. but then again, it there's, there shouldn't be anything special in in those no, containers. So. Yeah, yeah. Jetty, uh, for instance, runs properly on OSGI. It's it's written. Based on OSGI, right? It's, an, right. it's a it's a really good OSGI bundle. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. an embedded server. Yeah. All right, uh, we have more questions. Alex is asking, uh, what can you say about JPA Eclipse Link in OSGI? So, yeah, uh, <coughs> is there some best best practices yeah, you, there, made, there you is. mentioned? There is there is there, there, there is the OSGI specification for GPA, yeah. and there is uh, one limitation um, you need to put. Um, how should I explain your your persistence unit? Yeah, yeah, um, may only be based on one bundle and its fragments. So you can't say, okay, I have different um, bundles, yeah, and some of the entities are contained there, are yeah, so. there, and so on. Okay, yeah. so that doesn't. No, you have to put everything, uh, everything in, 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 one, in, so. in, in, in in one bundle yeah. and in in and its fragments. Okay. We didn't talk about fragments. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's but, but 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 it's something like a bundle without a life cycle, and you can uh, attach them to bundles. Yeah, one bundle can okay. 
have many many fragments. Okay. But maybe you should look at the the Gemini project from Eclipse. There are some configurations. Take a look there. Okay. Yeah. But we are we are putting all the with uh, all the GPA entities mm. into one. Yeah, 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 so that's the simple. Into one bundle. All right, and then there is Vikrant asking about uh, preferred solution using OSGI inside servlet container or using HTTP servers on OSGI container. Yeah. So you can do the both <laughs> yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can put you can put your your you can put your OSGI environment into a WAR file. Yeah. And put it into um, an application server. Right. And then the application server st starts your OSGI environment. Okay. Or you can put your uh, OSGI environment, uh, or you can, can, can put your okay. application okay. server into the OSGI yeah. environment. Yeah. Uh, I, I had been at customer places and I always suggest put your web server into your OSGI container. Yeah, okay, yeah. this way around. So. Yeah, yeah. I, had, I, I never had problems with it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the, the other way, you, you have your standard edition mm -hmm. running and you deploy, de deploy your WAR file and it will install uh, your uh, OSGI yeah. environment mm -hmm. running. Yeah, I heard about people doing that, yeah. I never, I, I never did it. Yeah, okay. And, and maybe I try someone in... in it sounds, as, like, a, it a sounds, sounds like a way to get the OSGI to environments where it's not at home, at, so like a new server environment yeah. completely. But. Yeah, for instance, okay. the web logic or how, how is the open source part mm. called for web, the, the beer, beer web server? Yeah. yeah, they're completely based on OSGI. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so, so pure and OSGI, OSGI container. Yeah. And we, um, we get two more videos. Okay, yeah, yeah. please. So, we, um, for the OSPP project, we prepared uh, some uh, domain specific languages and one of these uh, languages. I think we have some problem to showing the video. Is it fine? It doesn't work. No, I didn't start it. It's yeah. black so far. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we, we we implemented our own domain specific language to create Vanin yeah. Um, UIs. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> most probably, it's um, we will also add additional UI kits for it. Okay. Yeah, but so for now we have Vardin. Okay. Yeah, that's sounds our main main UI kit. Here, up there in the editor, you can see our um, implemented grammar. It's only a short, um, short, short part of the video. What we are doing here, we uh, defined an IDE view. It's called the Vardin sample. We put in a horizontal layout. We put in a form, first name, last name, a table. Now we're creating the columns. We have um, fully um, content assist uh, here. Here we you can see properties from a, a bean, a TTO, so a Java bean. And um, the interesting part on it, uh, we do not generate any Java code or at least no Java code. Uh, we're creating a model, an EMF model, it's yeah. called the Eclipse Modeling Framework model, and we. Um, are rendering at real time. Now we're defining a data source, a data source <coughs> to the to the TTO. You can see it on the left side, Mydot yeah. Java. And now we're doing binding. Yeah? Uh, doing binding with with um, Vardin is really easy. It's yeah. not hard, but that way is much easier. So. Yeah. Um, therefore, we we are using two binding technologies. We are using right. the Eclipse this data cool. binding and the Vardin data binding, and we have been. Together. Written, yeah, a layer the the observable values for for the the oh, the yeah, right. data binding. So we we have been writing a bridge for it. Okay. And now we can see we bind the list, um, the, the 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 my um, TTO provides a collection about um, my other, and we just bind it to. To, to, to children, to, to the input collection, you can see data is there, um, and providing the data in background. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And now we are going to to finish the the uh, master detail. We are binding the selection from our table. You can see all the attributes available in the DTO um, to the uh, value of the first name. 
Yeah, and now we have we have implemented oh, okay. a master detail so it's dialog. Like, so it's a real time data binding enough. Now we're trying to change the first name and we will see nothing happens. Yeah. It's okay. a it's a one way binding. We have to add uh, we have to make it a, a two way two binding, way a binding. Bi directional binding. Yeah, that's no, one no, of and now it's actually working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a that's a quick that's, way to do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then and, and that's a way to use OSGI yeah, okay. and, so and to integrate it with it. Yeah, yeah. So you can build very dynamic yeah, applications. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So just let's see the, the, the checkbook visible and then we are skipping the second video. Oh, it's okay. pretty much the same. Yeah. yeah. Right. So now we got we got a checkbox in there and now we are binding the value of the of the checkbox to the visible state of the table of the children table. Yeah, and it's so gone. And if you are oh, setting the setting so checking setting the, the checkbox, checkbox yeah, yeah, it comes right. back. So the second bit is pretty much the same. Okay. I'll put okay. Them so I think I think, we, are, no I think we have used our, uh, our yeah. reserved hour here, so I think it's time to wrap this up. But uh, like normally, there is the forum thread going on. We can continue answering there later on. And uh, yes. Head to vaadin.com, there is Florian's wiki articles there. You, they are a good starting point for using OSGI and Vaadin together. Yeah. And uh, yes, be active on the forums. See you there. Thanks. Bye.